know, in the kingdom, redemption is everything. It's the currency of King Jesus. There's actually an exchange that takes place whenever redemption happens where God remembers the price that has been paid instead of the thing that he paid the price for. Wow, that's crazy cool. Hey everybody, Troy Brewer here. Blessings and peace on you and welcome to the Open Door Wednesday night experience. And guys, we are producing these things and putting them together so that we can still keep our Wednesday night experience going. You know, everybody's got so many challenges today. We do too, but guys, we are batting it out of the park and we're taking on hell with a water pistol. Welcome, my friends. I call you blessed and you're going to love this today. Guys, I'm going to be talking about uh, redemption today. And this is actually called the road to redemption. You're really going to enjoy this. This is actually picking back piggybacking, I should say, from the Sunday experience. If you saw that, this is part two of that, and you're gonna dig this. But you know what? We're not filming this at Open Door Church. We're filming this at the Wix secret location somewhere in the world, right? And it's raining here, so you know what we're gonna do? We're all gonna go inside the house. We're gonna do praise and worship together, and then we're gonna have our Bible study together. You're so gonna love this. Get ready to be blessed. Get ready to praise and worship with us. Get ready to just cry out to God wherever you're at. And you know what? The Spirit of the Lord is going to fill your home right there. He is not subject to time. He is not subject to distance. All right, guys, you guys ready to do this? So let's go into the living room right here, right now. Get ready. Here we go. Boom. Welcome everybody, welcome to the living room sessions. <laughs> in the midst of uh, people being quarantined to their homes, we've been able to gather together with a bunch of friends of ours at the Wicks house and they've been good enough to let us trash their house today and invade it. We're in the process of eating absolutely everything in their refrigerator right now, which is my privilege. But guys, I wanna welcome you here and I wanna encourage you guys to worship as we are worshiping here. We just got through saying a prayer as we faded off into this. I and mean, I can already feel the presence of the Lord. He's here. So just declare that healing is going to take place while we're doing this. Right? You guys believe that? Really? That folks are going to get healed? That God's going to do amazing things? Listen, don't be discouraged. Just seek the Lord. So crank up your sound and worship the King with us. We love you, King Jesus. Guys, let's all just worship the King. We love you, Lord. Praise you, God. You're just so good. Thank you, Lord.
love you, Lord God, and we praise you, sir. You're so good. Good job, guys. That's Good awesome. job, man. It's fun. Good. Good job, Pauline. Oh, thanks. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> so in the midst of uh, such a big mess, uh, what's amazing is everybody's been like bound and determined to watch more and more and more news. I've been like bound and determined to watch less and less and less. Honestly, I'm sorry. I'm just like, yep, yeah, heard enough. Heard enough. Like, but you both stay informed from what? For, in, for you know, stay informed of what? You can... You can get the same news in watching 10 minutes of news as you can in 10 hours, you know, news. And so I'm not ignorant of the news. I'm not ignorant of the stuff that's going on. Now, I know what's going on, but I've been like, that's not what I'm going to focus on. I'm just not going to. All the uncertainty, all the mess. So I have friends all over the world that, you know, we're all part of the same tribe. And a big part of what God does through us. Oh, sorry. I forgot you were there. <laughs> a, big part, a big part of what God does through us is... You know, he rescues people, and I'm just so grateful for that. It's really hard for me not to use my left hand. Maybe I just <laughs> do this, put it under here. And uh, this last week, I got a really cool report. Um, okay, so one of the challenges whenever kids are in, like, really bad rings, when they're, like, in really, really, really bad places, is that if you go in and if you save these kids in these brothels, if all the kids are not there... The ones that were not there, they go and pick those kids up from whatever houses and then they disappear and you never, you never see them again. And it's like, you can't just, and you know, this is not my expertise, it's, it's people that we work with that is their expertise, but you can't just go in with guns blazing and save a bunch of kids in a brothel. You have to do it in a way that they are all there at the same time so that you can get all of them. Well, you can imagine what a challenge that is, you know? You can just imagine, except for now, Everybody's kind of in the same places. And so our teams are using this as an opportunity to find out, okay, in this really bad place where these kids are being sold off into sexual slavery, in this really bad place, could it be possible that they're all in the same place at this time because of the quarantines? And the answer to that is yes. So this last week, at the beginning of the week, something miraculous happened just out of the blue. Got word from a good friend of mine that, which he didn't even have hope to do this. He thought it would be through two or three or four different ways of, of sting operations, but actually saved all 41 kids at one time in one day. 41 slaves who are no longer slaves. 41 kids who are now gonna get to be kids again. You know, man, we can just make a really big, we, we can just, I, I mean, do we know what a big deal that is? Yeah. I, I, I was watching uh, Harriet the other day. Have you guys seen the movie Harriet? What a freaking rock star movie that is. And I love how they, how they showed the prophetic side of her. Yes. Yeah. Oh, my God. I was watching that, you know, I think I would, I would really like to think that if I lived back in that day, that I would have been an abolitionist. I would really like to believe that, and I really hope that I would have been. But we're abolitionists right now, right this second. We are, and we have that opportunity to do that. And not everybody has that opportunity, you know, in the sense of like what we do. I just thank God for it. I just, I thank God for it every day. It puts everything in perspective. You know, just that there's 41 kids who have never had a chance to be a kid in their life that they're gonna get to be kids now. All 41 of them were there. It's a tremendous miracle. So, in light of that, what is your next song, my sister? No Longer Slave. Wow! That's the prophetic no. I knew that song was what was coming up. Yeah, it's good stuff. I remember the first time I heard you sing this. The first time I ever heard it was I heard you sing it. Yeah, and do you remember there were these people who were visiting our church, and then they got saved, during that song, and then she went out and she tattooed all across her arms, I'm no longer a slave to sin. Do you remember that? I you know, she'd never been in church in her life and she just wanted to go out and ink herself up and go, look, I'm no longer a slave to fear. So cool. Yeah. All right. Crazy cool. Now it's cool. Crazy cool. 
shame and guilt, condemnation, thinking that they did something wrong to be there. And right now, they've been delivered of all of that. That's huge. I almost lost it when I said those, when I sang those words. It's like, whoo. Man, Heavenly Father, just surround those kids. Surround them right now, God. Wrap your arms around them. Imagine the confusion <laughs> that they're feeling, wondering, is this real? Am I really set free? Am I gonna go back where I've been my whole life? So just comfort them, God. Wrap your arms around them, Lord. Let them just feel such a love in their heart. Let them feel so much assurance from you, God, that they are free and they are no longer slaves. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am. songs of deliverance. We may liberate yes, from our bondage. We're the sons and the daughters. Let us see our free 
So I'm no longer a slave to fear Cause I am a child of God I'm no longer a slave to fear Cause I am a child of God Yes I am I am a child of God Thank you for making me a child of God Hallelujah so I want you guys to get out your communion elements if you guys have it. Everybody that's watching at home, if you've got some communion elements, then we're all gonna do communion together. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So, one of the things that happens when you do communion is you have to be super duper duper intentional about your love and your relationship that you have with the people that are around you. One of the reasons why King Jesus said, do this as often as you get together is because you gotta go, okay, I have to forgive everybody of anything I'm irritated at. And you know, a bunch of us has been cooped up in the house for a couple of weeks. <laughs> have discovered that we need a whole new um, fruit, I should say, or gift of self-control where we just go, dude, I just can't believe how easily agitated I am, or I can't believe how everything has to be perfect or whatever. And you know, you've been facing a lot of challenges. You know what? Well, this is a time that you intentionally wash that off and go, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope, that's not how I'm going to live. Right on. So we all agree with that, right, guys? I agree with that. So take out your bread and do this with us. Father God, sir, we thank you, God, that you've made us to be a part of your body. And God, you've accepted every single one of us, no matter what we come from, no matter if we're male or female, if we're young or old, if we're rich, if we're poor, no matter what race we are, no matter what background we come out of, no matter what, God, you have invited us all to sit at the same table. So God, we believe that, and since we believe that, we extend that same love and forgiveness to every single person around us, Lord God. And I thank you, God, that as we do this together, that your spirit inhabits us because this is your body, and your spirit is always in your body. This we do in remembrance of you, in Jesus' name. When Jesus poured the wine into the cup and he passed the cup around, there's so many different layers of revelation with this. And you know, really and truly for the rest of your life, you're gonna be discovering what this means. I'm still learning. I'm, I've been doing this, you know, I got saved when I was 19. And I'm 26 now. <laughs> oh wait, I don't think we're supposed to lie during communion. <laughs> So I'm 50, yeah, I'm 53 now. Yeah, it's a lot more than that, right? <laughs> it's been a long time since I was 26. How long has it been since you were 26? One year? Yeah. It's very encouraging. I think I need to stay in forgiveness is what I need to do. <laughs> Actually, there are so many different revelations of this, and we've been learning this. I'm still continuing to learn it, just that we share the same blood. We have the same blood. It's crazy. The same blood. That God's doing this incredible miracle, and when he looks, when he looks at our DNA, he says, those are my kids. Supernatural bloodline. How can a disease stand against the DNA of God Almighty? How can the curse of your past stand against the blessing of being a part of the King's family. I mean, so King Jesus, we recognize God that the blood is the life. 
And this we do in remembrance of you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I heard this song, Abba. The first time I ever heard it was when I was in California. And uh, do you guys remember Bob? What was Bob's last name? Bob Book. Oh my gosh. Do you guys? I was going to say Zach. Yeah. Wow. No. 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 <laughs> Bob Book. And Bob Book was leading uh, worship in uh, Vacaville, California. And he got up there and he, he did this song. Bob's just such a cool guy. And he got up and he did this crazy cool song. And I, I know that Bob didn't write it. Who actually, does anybody know who actually wrote this song? It's Jonathan Helser. You think it's who? Jonathan Helser. It's the same guy who wrote No Longer Slaves? See, everything I do is planned. That's why. <laughs> so it starts off and it says, it start off and say, you're more real then? Right? Yeah. The ground I'm standing, the ground on. I'm standing on. You're more real than the, the, wind, the wind in, in my, my lungs, lungs, right? That I wonder what he was thinking when he wrote that. What was it going on? Do you, you know I have that line, you know, we want to hear we want to hear the word and make it real. That whole thing of I don't want it to just be a theory. I don't want it to just be I want it to just be so real. All right. All right, you might have to help me in case I forget. All right. Will you help me? All right, so let's do this. So we're gonna hit a G. Yeah, you like that? I told you everything I do is planned. It's close to that. Love you, God. Yeah. You're more real than wind in my lungs. What that was it? It's the ground I'm standing on, right? All right, so we'll do that one next. You're more real than the ground I'm standing on. Thoughts define me. Here we go. Your thoughts define me. You're inside me. You're my reality.
listen, we're going to continue to worship the Lord. I encourage you guys to continue to worship with us. And then we're going to get right off into our Bible study. We'll be right back with you right after this. priority is not, I don't want to get sick. Our highest priority is to be life to people. That is our highest priority, to help people and to love people and to bless people. Where, are the, where is the courage of the body of Jesus? Stand up, stand up and love people and help people and bless people and encourage people. For, for you guys that are telling me that it's irresponsible for us to take groceries to people's houses, get up. Get up and be full of the Holy Ghost and wake up every day going, dude, this is an opportunity right here, right now. You can find old people in your community that they have no business getting out right now. Can you get out for them? Can you go bless them? How can you step up? Where are their single mamas that the only income that they have is through being a waitress or something and they're not allowed to work right now? And they don't have any money at all. How can you step up and how can you bless them? Man, instead of you playing it safe inside your house, get out, walk around your city and pray over it. Pray over your mayor. Pray over your city council. Pray over your church school board. Lift up our leaders. Pray for your governor. Pray that they're protected. Declare Psalms 91 around their life and be the people that God Almighty has called us to be. Hallelujah. Well, welcome back, everybody. Blessings and peace on you. Don't you love praise and worship? And isn't it good that we can get together as friends and worship the Lord? Isn't it good that we can get together and do communion together? You know, guys, we're about to transition over into the giving time. And I want to just remind you that just because our building is not full does not mean that we are not doing what God Almighty has called us to do. You know, even last weekend, friends, we had we had the food bank actually at Open Door Church. We gave away more than 100,000 pounds of food. We also had the food outreach at Walnut Springs. Uh, we gave away food to 300 and something uh, families. It was incredible. I actually took groceries to, to some people's homes and we said, hey, let's help fix up your home. We've been coming across people in the midst of going to folks' homes that need basic appliances and things like that. Why not? Why not step up? Why not and be the hands and feet of King Jesus? You know, guys, that's what the Open Door Tribe has always done, and that's what we're doing again. And uh, we haven't backed that off at all. Even this coming Sunday, as we're having our special Resurrection Weekend services, well, they're different. Why? Because the wineskin has changed. They just are. And I wish we could all gather together, but we can't. We will be able to again, I guarantee I come to it, but I can tell you this, in the meantime, we're gonna do the same thing this coming Saturday. We're gonna give away more than 100,000 pounds of food, somewhere around 150,000 pounds of food, absolutely free, no strings attached, in a way that looks like Jesus, amen? Where we, where we love people, we honor people, we do that. So you know what, this is your part where you get to partake in that. It's like, how, how am I gonna partake in that? you're actually going to stand with us. Guys, this is not me doing this, this is us doing this. I get a lot of credit that I don't deserve, but I get a lot of blame I don't deserve too, so it all kind of pans out. Listen, it's giving time, and I wanna pray for you concerning your giving. So Father God, I wanna lift up every single person, God, that is watching right now, every single family, and I just, I just declare the blessings of Abraham upon all of us, Lord God, as givers. 
King Jesus, sir, thank you, God, for choosing us to get to be the giver instead of having to be the receiver. It's so much better. Father God, sir, you see all the sacrificial giving. God, you see the faithful giving. You see it all, Lord God. And I pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, that you would move upon our behalfs. I lift up, I lift up businesses, I lift up families, and I call them blessed. And I thank you for it, Lord God. In Jesus' name, amen. So guys, now that it's time to give, I'm gonna give you a couple of really cool ways that you can give. Number one, guys, if you wanna mail in a check, you can mail in your check to P.O. Box 3775, Big Time Burleson, Texas, and the zip code is 76097. Make your check out to Open Door Church. Or you know what, you can call to give. You can call 877-413-0888, or you can text to give. Simply text the word Open Door EXP, all one single word to 77977 and as always guys you can go to opendoorexperience.com guys thank you so much for giving thank you so much for not taking this lightly this is who God has called us to be and I praise God for it all right so here's what we're about to do while you're giving we're gonna go to a music video and give you a chance to do that and then we're gonna move back in to Pauline and Jedediah's house and we are going to actually do our big time word study tonight. You're gonna to love this. So go give, I call you blessed, and uh, I'll see you in just a few minutes. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Guys, sing that with me. Just say, here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. All of me. All right, let's do a verse. Who wants to find him in the secret place? To hear his word and make it real. Who wants the unexplainable and the indescribable of what you feel? Who can say that they have found the Lord? Who can say that they have been redeemed? And who has seen their chains come falling off and live as those who dream a dream? That's me, man. Here we go. Here I Okay, everybody, blessing and peace on you, man. Welcome, welcome, guys, to the living room, man. We're gonna be, I'm in here with all my friends. By the way, awesome job in praise and worship. Well, Good job, awesome. really. So glad to worship with you guys. Right on, I saw you over there worshiping just off camera. Yeah. Well, I was, I, I purposely didn't sit too close to a microphone. Right on. <laughs> well, for everybody that's watching right now, man, I want you to make yourself teachable and I want you to join us. And for everybody that's listening on the radio, man, we bless you. Everybody say, hello, radio. Hello, radio. Yeah, right on. So at this time, they're all wondering what I look like. And I'm, you know, six foot six, blonde headed, blue eyes, and so chiseled. Good. Yeah. <laughs> So it's, <laughs> I can't tell you how many people see me for the first time and go, you lied, dude, you lied. I think a more accurate description would be be Gaston. <laughs> yeah, I guess, thank you. you yep. Thank you. No one's neck is incredibly right. thick as Gaston. I love that song. Yes, I All know right. you do. You sing it okay. often. Okay, so... Guys, we're talking about redemption, and uh, I love the subject of redemption. I'm a redemption fanatic. Um, the Lord has taught me so much about King Jesus by saying, I want you to look into redemption. I want you to study redemption. And it's, it's 
it's been one of the, if you're gonna ask me, Troy, can you name some of the revolutionaries in your life? What are some things that once you got into that, everything changed? Once I got into redemption, everything changed. Everything changed. Once you you can't be religious and be a religious and be a redemption fanatic. You can't be mad at the world and be a redemption fanatic. You know, I was I was listening to uh, Don Piper's testimony called 90 Minutes in Heaven. Have you guys ever seen that? Man, I want to encourage you guys to do that. Look it up, okay? And it's a guy in Texas. There was a guy that ran over him on purpose, and he was dead for 90 minutes. They literally had a bag over his body, and they were going to have to cut him out of the car, and somebody went and prayed for him and continued to pray for him, and he started singing underneath the bag, and he went, dude, that guy's singing underneath the bag. And he would have, as soon as he came alive, Blood went everywhere because his arm was nearly torn off, his leg was nearly torn off, his everything. And the reason why he didn't bleed to death is because his heart didn't beat for 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as his heart started beating, blood started going everywhere, he nearly died again and they had to. But anyway, they asked him, I saw this in an interview with him, they said, Do, have you had unforgiveness towards that guy? And he goes, no, he goes, there's no way. Once you've been to heaven and see how forgiven you are and how honored you are, he goes, it's nearly impossible to have unforgiveness towards people. It's just nearly impossible. Like once you get it, and that's how that works, right? You know, so, so the Bible says we love God because he first loved us. Yes. So it's our revelation that God loves us that causes us to be able to love. And it's our revelation that we are forgiven that causes us to be able to forgive. It also causes us to be able to reach out to anybody. I mean, any people group on the planet Earth you don't care because you know that God loves them and he wants to bring redemption to them and that's how redemption works. Mm. So studying redemption, dude, is where it's at and being a redemption fanatic, which means if you're a redemption fanatic, you're also a hope fanatic. And if you're a hope fanatic, then you're also a transformation junkie. Yeah. Nice. And this is, this is where we're supposed to be in the body of Jesus. No matter what our expressions of worship are, no matter what, you know... <sighs> No matter what any of those things are, those things are not supposed to divide us, by the way. Those th we're supposed to think those differences are cool. We're not supposed to think that those differences are what separates us. And again, I didn't believe that growing up. And I didn't even believe it after I got saved. I believed it when I became a redemption freak. Right? I'm telling you, it changes everything. It's, it is a huge game changer. So you're like, okay, so what exactly is redemption? Well, I don't know. Let me find my. <laughs> it saves marriages too. <laughs> because, see, you can't be mad that your spouse is late because they're not subject to time anymore. I'm not ever mad at you oh, for being yeah. late. <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Jesus. You're not subject to time anymore, so it's impossible to be late. Well, yes. Praise God for redemption. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you for Revolution. teaching. And, yes. And yes. for redeeming time. Yes. He's so yes, good. He does See, because he's he does so that. good. So this is, there's a lot of definitions, a lot of different definitions of redemption, but this is like my definition of redemption. Redemption means deliverance from some evil by payment of a price. So there's actually has to, in order for redemption to take place, there actually has to be an exchange. It's not something that you just wish would happen. There has to be an actual exchange. <laughs> We're hearing this dog whine. It's okay. Everybody's got dogs at their house. They got dogs at their house. Nobody cares. So people be driving down the road going, what is that noise? What is that? So no, it's, it's your sweet dogs. So redemption, there has to actually be an exchange. So what happens is whenever Jesus redeems somebody, what happens is, God chooses to look at the price that has been paid instead of the sin that he redeemed. Oh, that's so good. Mm -hmm. And that is huge. That's that is so huge. Good. So we know that Jesus did tons and tons and tons of miracles, right? And, and as a matter of fact, we don't know how many miracles. We know how many are recorded in the Bible, which is 34. But that's just a tiny smidgen of the actual miracles right. he did. The Bible says at the end of the book of John that he did so many other things that if all the things that he did were written down, the, book, the world could not contain the books. Mm -hmm. So he's not limited to what happened in Scripture, right? Mm -hmm. he, at all. Right. I mean, at all. <laughs> I mean, at the very least. He did 10 gazillion other things that are not recorded in Scripture, but the Scripture was passed down for our sakes to testify of him, right? Mm -hmm. But he wasn't limited to it. So there's 34 examples of miracles that King Jesus did. So obviously the number 34 has to do with miracle working power, 
Mark 9. I like that. I like that a whole lot. But the very first one is a... All of, all of those miracles are tremendous um, demonstrations of what redemption is all about. But the very first one is really a ridiculous miracle. Now, it's absolutely essential if you understand that everything in the kingdom is relational before it's functional. And if you understand that family matters, but it does not fit into the typical church paradigm. I'm the pastor of a very large church. I know what fits in the church paradigm and what doesn't. Well, okay. not in the American church. Certainly not the American okay. church. But I mean, if you're like, okay, here's the deal. God's going to show up. Okay, there's people that need to be healed. There's people that need to be set free. There are people that are in prisons that need to come out of prisons. There are people that have leprosy. There are people that are dead that needs to be raised up. And the first thing he's going to do is create wine for a party. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's would not, nobody would say that that's what would be his first order of business. Right. Nobody would do that. And it's like, why? Because it was a shameful situation. And redemption changes shame into honor. It changes the very worst into the very best. And in the Jewish culture, it made perfect sense. So whenever Jesus gets up and he gives his very first sermon and says, hey, he's quoting, he's quoting Isaiah, I'm here to set the captives free, right? He gives his very first, I am anointed. I'm anointed. And uh, by the way, I'm here to set the captives free. He didn't go to prison to say that. He went to church to say that. He was in the synagogue. <laughs> right, because right. a lot of times we think people that are captive are just people that are in jail. A lot of times people are captive in their own thoughts or their traditions or their culture or whatever it is. Or your idea and of who God what he is was talking about. that was passed down from some knucklehead to you. Yeah. And he's like, no, I'm actually going to show you the Father. Yeah. So his very first example of his miracle work in power at the wedding in Cana and, and he, he starts off by telling his mom, uh, it's not my time. You're messing with my mojo. It's not my time. I don't know if you guys have ever considered that Mary, he submitted to Mary's authority when it came to the timing of things. You first, the, the first time you see that is, uh, is whenever he's 12 years old and he's preaching. And she, he says, she's like, where have you been? It's like, woman, didn't you know I'd be about my father's business? And she said, no. And he went, okay, no. <laughs> Like, what is it? And it says, and he made himself subject to them. Meaning, okay, if I'm going to be a human being, I have to make myself subject to parents like every other human being. So then, all these years later, when he's 30 years old, this is what he says. He goes, so, so he changed his timing for her. Proof he was a mama's boy. <laughs> <laughs> he changed his timing for her. And then at the beginning of his ministry, he's like, she's like, hey, they don't have anyone. He goes, what does that have to do with me? He goes, why are you bringing me that burden? What, what do you want me to do? And then and she's like, hmm? I can just see her looking at him, hmm? And he's like, no, 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 it's not time yet. And then she looks at him, and then she turns to everybody. Whatever he's fixing to tell you to do, you need to do it. Meaning, no, he's going to tell you to do something. And he enters into his ministry at the authoritative word of his mama because of his submitted relationship to her. That's the, that's the power of, of relationships. Awesome. That God will, we're talking about God in the flesh. He's like, I was going to do it this way, but since we're so close, I'm just going to do it this way. I mean, he did that with Moses. He told Moses, I'm wiping them out, and I'm starting a whole new race of human beings out of you, Brother Moses. And Moses like, "Uh, can we kind of rethink that? Because everybody's going to say you're mean. (laughs) That's what he tells him. He's like, nobody's going to understand redemption. Nobody's going to understand, dude, you set people free. And then you know what you do? You kill them. He says, that's not what the story of redemption is. And God went, oh, okay, well, I'll change my mind. But he did that because of his relationship with Moses. Okay. So relational things are so important. So the very first miracle working power that you see that Jesus does, he shows up. They have these 12 big things of water, and it was it was most likely used for purification, which they had a bunch of rules that they had to go by, which was right on. And he's like, okay, put these big things of water over there. And he said, here's the deal. I want you to pour it, and then I want you to submit to the authority of the guy. Jesus does not want to. He is God. He's changing the water into wine, but he doesn't want to usurp the authority of the guy that's actually in charge of the wedding. That's remarkable to me. And... We get submission so wrong 
and it's such a taboo thing to talk about submission, especially, you know, in, in marriages, you know, submit to your husband. People are like, what? You know, it, it's modern day. No, there's a real rule in submission, and God shows up when you submit. And, and this, is, this is it. This is a perfect example of it. Jesus himself submitted. And when you can do that and have the confidence in that and say, okay, Lord, I'm submitting like you have told me, he shows up every single time. Because it's selfless. And he does a miracle every single time. It's because it's selfless. Mm-hmm. And God, you know, we say this all the time that the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is selfishness. selfishness. That's the opposite of love. Like, you know what? I'm not walking in love right now because I'm just being selfish. I have to have it this way. I have to have it that way. And go, that's not where the love of God is. So they take this. This was common well water. Now it's been turned into divine wine. And frankly, when they drank it, he's like, are you kidding me? He's like, why? You should have busted this out first, okay? Now that everybody has drank, they can't tell that it's any swinging good. They can't appreciate how awesome it is. You should have done this at first. That's what you should have done. And so what is all that? He's saying, that's how it is in the kingdom. Everything that is last is moving to the front now because of redemption. That's how redemption works. You think, well, the good part was then, and all I really had to look forward to now is something worse. And that's not what redemption does. Redemption always, always gives us hope for something so much better. So all of that time that you think you've lost and you go back to the good old days, and the good old days are still ahead of you. Yeah, They're right. not behind you. It's not when you were young and when you're a teenager and when you think you had all your strength and all that. It's in, the day, it's in the days of your wisdom that you have. And those are the good old days when you're able to appreciate the things that you have and, and to walk in those things. Really? Yeah. So I'd like for us to, I want to share a couple of, of examples of redemption that I've seen in my life because I'm such a redemption fanatic. But I want to give a couple of scriptures. I did this on Sunday, this past Sunday when I was... Or I should, yeah, this past Sunday. And I want to kind of go over this again, that there's some benefits of redemption that I found in the Bible, and we'll put these on the screen for you. Revelation 5, 9 and 10 says, the benefit of redemption is eternal life. That's a big deal, right? That's a really, really, really big deal. Mm-hmm. Ephesians 1, 7 says, forgiveness of sins. Okay, if, uh, forgiveness of sins. Romans 5.17, and I'll just, I'll highlight all this and give this to these guys. Romans 5.17 is righteousness. The next one is, wait, wait, and you guys understand, it's not just forgiveness of sins, but it's God saying, we're going to be peers. We're going to stand side by side now. That, I, I think about that a lot. Look, I know that we're totally subject to God. I know that there's, but he's the one that says, I want us to sit at the same table. Yeah, what an honor. God, that's crazy cool. And like, I'm going to give you right standing with me. You're the righteous, and it's not, it's his righteousness. Mm-hmm. He's like, I'm going to let you have my righteousness so we can stand side by side together. Mm-hmm. God, come on. Why would you not want to get with the Jesus yeah. program? I mean, it's, eh. okay. <laughs> Freedom from law's curse, that's Galatians 3.13. Freedom from guilt and shame, that's Romans 3.24. Think about that, that with the redemption package goes, no, 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 you're not allowed to be, you're not allowed to be ashamed Mm, of anything. (sighs) Yes, I hate it when people are ashamed. We hate shame. We have a hatred for shame. You know, we've seen so many situations in life where people who had literally made themselves our enemies got into a shameful situation. And I want to tell you something, and we've showed up, went, ah, we don't want nothing to do with that. We don't want, we're not here to make fun of you. We're here to help you. How can we help you with this? Because this is bad. And we hate this for you. We hate shame. Um, freedom from guilt and shame. Freedom from accusation. That's John 8, 11. Ah, that nobody can accuse you of anything because the price that Jesus paid for you. Uh, freedom from accusation is a huge deal, man. And then... Uh, let's see here. Complete justification. <laughs> Completely justified. Adoption into God's family. That's Galatians 4, 5. Yeah, you're not just the stepchildren. You are the children. You know, you're not just. It's, it's one of the things that we're constantly talking about is the kids that have our name have to be our kids. We can't just say, well, yeah, you have our name but you're not actually our kids. We do have biological kids, and our kids understand how crazy we are, and I thank God that our biological kids have never been mad at us for calling all these other kids that have our last name our kids. 
and we're going to be the grandparents of their kids. And uh, you, you, you have to do that right, and you cannot mess that up. You cannot. And we've learned that from redemption. And then deliverance from the bondage of sin, just saying that, right on. And then peace with God, Colossians 1.8, and then the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so to be redeemed then is to be forgiven, holy, justified, free, adopted, and reconciled. Okay, all right, guys. So I think, I think honestly, out of all the, th- I, I've had some redemption things that I've seen as personal, but that has just made such a tremendous difference. But I mean, I think the one that most clearly, <clears throat> that most clearly shows us how redemption works is probably just the act of literally finding slaves throughout the world, finding out what their bond is on them, literally paying the bond, and then picking them up and then saying, hey, I'm not here to molest you. I'm not here you know, as a typical American man and what he would be here for. I'm here to bring you into my house, to bring you into my family. I'm, I, I'm here to prove that Jesus loves you so much that he sent me from the other side of the world to come here and to pay this price for you and to bring you into a family to where nobody's ever gonna hurt you again. And not only is nobody ever gonna hurt you again, but this is not gonna define your life. Right. You know, the, the, the time that you were hurt is not going to define your life. It's not going to. How set free you are is going to define your life. And we've seen that so many times from so many kids throughout the years and from so many young women that I, I, I can't even, I can't tell you how many people I have on my heart and on my mind. When I get real still and just close my eyes, I always see faces, always. Just boom, 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 boom. And um, I, I don't know a greater act of redemption than that. I think my favorite one um, is we were in Mexico 25 years ago, and we would do a work in the dump with Pastor Gene. And I loved the dump. I know that sounds crazy. I'm sure he was. And I loved the dump. I loved going to the dump and seeing the people there and being able to bring life into that place. And there were such beautiful people. But there was one lady in particular. Her name was Isabella. And we loved Isabella. We loved her. Anyways, um, she lived there for a long time, and she actually had children there. But she was there because she owed the cartel money, and she couldn't get out. And she was just real special to us. And and she was my age. Yeah, she was. At that time, she was Troy. She was like thirty six. We were thirty six, and she'd been she'd been a slave since she was eighteen. Yeah, and so she told us her story. She'd been living there for eighteen years. uh, We were like, you know what? We just started talking to all of the people that were with us, and we said, Isabella, what is it going to cost to get you out of here? And and Pastor Gene, you know, talked to the other people to find out, you know, what is it going to take to get this this one. If you can't do it all, just start with one. Just start with one. Right. And so we did. We started with Isabella, and he found out, and it was going to be $460. Well, at that time, we were so poor, we couldn't pay attention to anything. But it didn't matter. You know, it just didn't matter. So we got with all of our group. Can I just, just clarify what you just said? Understand that that woman had been a slave for 18 years, mm-hmm. living in a dump and having to have her body sold because her family owed 460 bucks. Mm, yeah. Okay, it, how demonic is that, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. And so we're like, okay, well, we're going to pay it. So, so we, yeah, we, we went to all of the people that were with us. So if you go on a missions trip, just know this is what happens to you because <laughs> it still happens today because we always have somebody who needs something. Um, but we went to everybody and we collected it. The well, we got bunch. the money. We collected yeah, all of it. I passed the hat around and said, come on, and guys, so you guys got to help me. We took it to Pastor Gene. He went and paid the price. Um, and we were able to... To free her. Wow. And it reminded me of the story of Ruth and how she worked in the fields to, to feed Naomi on herself. And the very thing that owned her, you know, she was owned by those fields. She was a slave to the fields. Mm-hmm. She was a slave to that. To the but when side. Boaz redeemed Ruth, she owned the fields. That's right. And so when Isabella was redeemed from the trash dump, she became an owner of that trash dump, and she started doing a work outside yep. and taking stuff there. That's it was true. the craziest story ever, and it was just amazing to be able to see that in real life and go, "Wow!" And that was, and you know what? This this is great because because um, there was a, a long journey to the process mm-hmm. of that. Because after we bought her, and mind you, her kids how old were her? Her kids were the same age as our kids, yeah. and I don't remember how old her kids were, but. 
I'm going to say 12 and something, right? Mm -hmm. And those kids had never been out of that trash dump. They had never been out of that and trash dump. And she hadn't been out in 18 and she, years. And she, yeah. she had got married, mm -hmm. and uh, her husband was in there, and her kids were in there, and the whole nine yards. So then, so we paid this price. We got them out, and uh, can you imagine what that's like, setting people free, you know, and how that is. And we're just like, oh, my gosh. And, again, we'd known this lady for a long, long time. We just didn't know how easy it was to set her free. We just didn't know. And <clears throat> so then she, we, we set her free. And then at Christmas time, whenever we all got together, you know, to give all the Christmas toys away in the trash dump, I saw her in the crowd, and she was, like, covering her face. And I was kind of went through her by and I said, Isabella, what's going on? And she started crying, and she's like, please don't be mad at me. She goes, I, I, I'm i trying to learn how to live outside of this place. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, I do. And she I was do. explaining, she was so ashamed that we started. I was like, no, hey, man, you're set free. It's all good. But she honestly did not know how to live outside of the trash dump. And so she would sneak back in and, and work and hang out with their friends and everything, and... Isn't that the way we all have come yeah. out of our own yeah. stuff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and if I would have shamed her and said, yeah, God, we paid, we paid a big yeah. price for you. Yeah. And what's the matter with you? Right. You can never come back to this place. ever." were like, okay, it's all good. And there was a process, and we did, honestly didn't know how, how it was going to go. And she got further and further and further away mm -hmm. from it. I mean, she started off the first job that she had, the very first job she had whenever, whenever she got out of the trash dump, was... Um, she had it. We saw her. We were driving up to the trash yeah. dump, and we saw her. She had. She was riding a donkey, and she had this cart behind her, and she was taking everybody's trash. She was to the picking dump. up other people's <laughs> trash and taking it to the dump, and that was her business. Oh, wow. So she was getting further and further and further away from it. But you know, we are redeemed eternally, and that's real. Yeah. But man, you got stuff to work out, and you got to get. You got to let redemption do its work. And you have to know the Lord's not mad at you through that process. Yeah, that's right. He, we were he, never it doesn't mad make at him her. mad. It doesn't. We were never he loves mad at her. you, and he's just like, yeah, this is this is what I this is the price that I paid for you. That's right. And it may take some of you longer to get through that than others, but I'm with you through the whole process. He says, I'll never leave you or forsake you, and that's what he's talking about. Is whatever your process is, you can't get mad at your process. You have to embrace it and go, okay, this is just part of it, and don't stop. Because when you get mad at it, you stop or you go back. And just like the children of, of Israel were like, well, just let us go back to Egypt. We under, at least we understood what was going on there. We knew what was going to happen to us. And a lot of us do that. You know, Jesus paid the price for us. You know, he says, I've given you life more abundantly. And, you know, for me personally, it was a, it's, the redemption for me has been the Lord came to me, I don't know, about six months ago. And it was just a crazy thing. I was poor my whole life. And I didn't care. I just didn't care. It was what I knew. And about six months ago, the Lord just clearly spoke to me. He said, you're not poor anymore. And so I just started walking around the house going, I'm not poor anymore. And That's Troy's right. like, oh, no. Is this mean you're going to be spending <laughs> yeah. money? I mean, she's buying more shoes. I was like, no, it's That's not that. that. It's just that I need to say it to myself <laughs> so that I understand I'm not poor anymore. I'm not doing online shopping. I'm just uh, not poor anymore. So, but, it, you know, we all have to go through that process. Mm -hmm. And he's not mad at you while you go through it. He's, he's with you. Whether you go through it or not, he's yeah. with you. Who's got a really cool... What's something that you've seen in your own life that you've seen that you're like, dude, that, that's what Jesus looks like and that's what redemption looks like, right? Who's, who's got a story like that? What do you got? You got one? I've, I've got stories. Hey, man, would you, would you get a microphone? I want one story. <laughs> I've got stories. I know you do. Let's go. What do you got? Uh, well, I, I'm thinking of a, a friend of mine that has since passed away, but his name was Charles Evans. And when I met Chuck, he was in a work release program at a Geiger Penitentiary in Spokane, Washington. There's a backstory to that that's miraculous, literally miraculous on me even knowing he existed, which happened over a course of like four days. And on a Monday, he came in after two people that I had known. Their story also is a redemption story. And I saw this guy with no fingers on his right hand. He had like one little nub. And they called him Fingers. That was his, his criminal name. <laughs> and at one time, he was one of, if not, I think he was the most wanted criminal in Washington State. 
uh, for yeah. for a while because he was he was a big deal, and, uh, <laughs> and, and Jesus is a bigger deal. But Charles' story in in this regard is that when he came out of prison, his final stint behind bars after nine and a half years, he'd gotten radically saved, as a lot of people do. But something something radical happened where he got a revelation of what we're talking about, of being redeemed. Not just, okay, God had grace, he had mercy on me, but I'm still nothing. There was this thing that happened in Chuck that he got a revelation of who he was as far as the Lord is concerned. And Pastor Troy, you said it. It's God gave him an awareness of the price that was paid, not the sin that was paid for. And you could tell and even from the moment I met Chuck, where he was like, I, I saw these three little lines sticking up over his big heavy coat. And I said, what is that? And he goes, that's Jesus, man. Like right there in the bank. It was the coolest <laughs> thing. And, and I was like looking at this guy and he just had a revelation on him. Yeah. It wasn't like, you know, it, it was literally on him. And when he was let out of prison, as you guys are describing, he had to learn how to live outside. Because he, he told me at that point he'd spent over half his life, and he was a 50-year-old man wow. yeah. behind bars. That was, yeah. in, and when he was out, he was a criminal, like yeah. big time. Yeah. Right. And so here he is, a redeemed person, like, like a teenager, like a 12, 13-year-old yeah. in life, going, okay, I, I know who I am, but I don't even ho- know how to do this thing called life. And, and I got to be a part of his story that turned into, now this is what's crazy, is in in. In a penitentiary like that, it's not like minor crime. This is like he's a f- like a big time felon. Yeah. You can't go back into those places. Right. You can't fraternize with even the prison guards that you got to know that became your friends, even the people that ministered to you in in official capacity, and and they made miraculous decisions, literally miraculous decisions, to give him clearance to begin to go back in. He started a ministry called Saved by Grace Ministries that he funded, being a cleaner he cleaned buildings you know uh, office buildings whatever awesome so crazy and i got to watch chuck become a pastor become an ordained pastor awesome. and spend the rest of his life he had hep- hepatitis c is what ultimately took his life but he he didn't care like he just this guy was sold out to this this identity of being redeemed and and it wasn't it wasn't like glamorous and pretty and all the, the 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 cool stuff. It was this is an ex-con who loves Jesus, who knows who he is, that has given everything, literally dimes and time, to going back into the prison system and ministering the gospel of redemption. And not just the idea of God Jesus died for your sins, but this is who you are now. Good. And it was really, really a, a, a good, powerful man. season of my life to That's walk good. with him in that. What's his name again? Chuck Evans. He goes, Charles Evans. He went, he went by Chuck, though. I bless the memory of Chuck yeah. Evans in yeah. Jesus' name. Yeah. My yeah. brother, yeah. who I will know someday. Yes. 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 And don't you know he's, gonna, he's just going to love me? Oh, don't he, you know he is. <laughs> Y'all, you don't even know. He was a biker. Like, this guy was, he was awesome. No, he tells stories like Pastor Troy. Like, he would tell these stories. The way he lost his fingers, he's like, man, I was being a knucklehead. He's like, I was being a knucklehead, and we were robbing these other guys. And, and, right. and literally, and he goes, and, and God had grace on me, and I blew my hand off when I was trying to kill somebody. So he goes, so I didn't go to prison for murder. I just, yeah, like, praise God. God man. saves you. He had mercy on me. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Hey, Listen, I want us to I want us to pray for everybody and, and, and I'll get you to do that, man. And and next week, can we just do nothing but stories like this? Just from all of us? Can we please do that do next it. week? Yeah. Let's just do that. You got one? Right oh, on. Yeah. So oh, man, I want us to I want us to pray. Can we just pray? Listen, for everybody that's watching at home, and there's something else too. We pray we need to pray this for ourselves, <laughs> that we see more and more and yes. more redemption yeah. and that we're able to demonstrate yeah. more and more and more redemption. Um, before we before we do our prayer, let me let me read this to you. I, I in in my chapter in Redeeming Time, it says this. It says the if you can believe in the power of redemption, you can believe in the power of transformation. Right? So real. The act of changing common well water into the very best of wine you ever tasted is exactly what an act of redemption looks like. 
This is the very first miracle of the 34 biblically recorded miracles of King Jesus, and it shows us exactly what what he was supernaturally commissioned or anointed to bring. He changed something common into something extraordinarily marvelous. He changed a place and a time of sadness into a place and a time of great joy. He changed a situation from not near enough into a situation of way more than enough. He changed a shameful situation of lack and disappointment into a highly honorable situation of opulence and dreams coming true. And all this at the setting of a covenant wedding. Mm. Mm. I was like, when you're in covenant with me, this is part of the package. Right on. So, So, uh, I don't know. Who wants to lose some prayer? Who wants to lose some prayer? Come on. Who wants to go? Come on, Pauline. You want to lose some prayer? Sure. Come on, man. (laughs) Lead us in prayer. And listen, we got to see more redemption, and we got to demonstrate more redemption. Amen. That's where it's at. That's where the power of God is. Yes, it is. All right. It is. Let's do it, guys. Jesus, thank you that you are the great transformational God. We want to live in your presence, God. We want to display who you are on the earth, God. We want to bring your good news everywhere we go and do the simple things that bring great transformation and great restoration, Lord. God, we pray for restoration in families right now, restoration and redemption in marriages right now, redemption of children gone wayward, Lord, that you would bring them home, Lord, to be restored to their families, Lord, that you would put a hunger and thirst in them for their family, for their first love, Lord. Yes. And we thank you that you're doing all these thank things you, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the heart of the home, Lord. Mm-hmm. Thank you for restoring the heart of the home. In yes. Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. 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 Yeah. Good job, guys. Good job, good job. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, we'll do this again next week. And guys, I want to tell everybody that's watching right now, man, we love you guys. Thank you so much. Guys, you guys do know that this coming weekend is Easter. Woo! That's this coming weekend coming up, man. And uh, we put together, we all got together at, where were we at? The Texas Amphitheater. What's the, what's the name? The Promise. The Texas Amphitheater, The Promise in Glen Rose. And we filmed it, and we all got together and worshiped, and we filmed it. We did this huge production. It is going to be so awesome. And also, I want to tell you, one of the selfless acts of redemption that we constantly demonstrate is we do it through prayer, big time prayer. Starting this coming Friday night is our big time all night long prayer gig. Man, the last one was so powerful. Again, 24 hours of prayer. And if you're somebody that wants to be a part of that, you can sign up at opendoorexperience.com or you can call 877 413 0888 and then over the weekend we're going to have services at four o'clock at 5 30 right on how'd i do guys four o'clock 5 30 9 o'clock 10 45 uh 12 30 and then several more in the afternoon lots of opportunities man for you to to join us and worship king jesus with us but but i'll tell you this if you're somebody who needs food or if you know somebody who needs food and if you live in the dallas fort worth metroplex Come to the parking lot of Open Door Church anytime between 9 and 1 o'clock in the afternoon at Open Door Church. We're giving away 150,000 pounds of food with no strings attached because that's the way redemption works. That's right. Yeah, that's when it's a true act of redemption, yeah. there's no right. strings attached whatsoever. God says, for God so loved the world, he gave. That's knowing right. that people were going to slap him in the face with that, right. knowing that his investment would be wasted on some people's lives, he still said, I don't care. Right. Troy is liable to get saved. And he did. Woo-hoo! Yeah. So, you know what? <laughs> I don't have a clue what God's going to do with that. But guys, we're giving it all away. You're welcome to come and get it. If you know some vulnerable old folks or people whose immune system is compromised, man, come and pick up food for them and take it to them. Right on. Okay, guys. Man, until the next time I see you guys, I call you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favored of the Lord. Bye-bye, everybody. Bless you. Yay. Well, guys, so there you have it, man. You have a whole bunch of friends, a bunch of people who love each other together in the same place, going through the road to redemption, talking about how crazy cool it is that King Jesus not only brought redemption, but he is the redemption that he actually brought. He decided to bring nothing but the best himself. Praise the name of King Jesus. Listen, guys, we're going to continue to do this. This coming Sunday, obviously, is going to be a huge weekend. 
And so and it, it has to do all about redemption. And that's actually called the red letters. And it's going to be a great word. And you're going to like that. That's our special Easter services. So starting this Saturday, you can join us at 4 and at 5.30 p.m. And then Sunday, we're going to be doing that at 9 o'clock, 10.45, and a couple of additional times throughout the day. And you can just look for those. Friends, I want to encourage you, share this, like it, tell folks that, man, you got to know about this. This is so cool. And then I also have to tell you this, that on Friday night, guys, we're doing all night long prayer this coming Friday night. And uh, it's going to start at 6 o'clock at Open Door Church. We, our praise and worship team is going to be on there. Be looking for all of our live feeds. And I would love for you to sign up to spend at least an hour in prayer for those 24 hours. And guys, we actually have a prayer guideline that we're asking everybody to pray. And we also have sign-up sheets. And you can find that at opendoorexperience.com. Please sign up and please let us know that you're actually doing that. Come on, man. Let's all pray together. Hey, it's Passover time. It's Passover. And guys, we're believing that the Lord will now begin to turn back this plague just like he did thousands of years ago when the people of God were quarantined in their home the night of the very first Passover. Yeah, guys, we're actually believing for that. So join us this coming Friday, this coming Saturday, this coming Sunday online. And then if you need help, if you need food, if you live within our area, come to Open Door Church on Sunday and we're going to give away another 150,000 pounds of free food on Easter Sunday morning right there in the parking lot of Open Door Church. This is what it looks like. You can see it. Listen, it's going to be an amazing experience for everybody who actually needs help. And if you would like to help us with that, you can call 877-413-0888. Again, that's 877-413-0888. Well, guys, it's time for us to close. And this is an incredible time. It's an amazing time. Listen, our Redeemer lives. Our Redeemer lives and He loves you so much. Keep going after Him. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for liking this, for commenting on it, and for sharing it. Until this weekend, it's a really big weekend, guys. I call you the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, and highly favored of the Lord. Bye-bye, everybody. I love you guys. Bye, y'all.